Hey folks, my guest today is John Marshall. He's a CEO and board member at Userful, leading provider of AV over IP solutions for enhanced video communication. He focuses on developing and implementing strategic growth initiatives for the business, launching the company to new markets and expansion through new technology and channel partnerships. He's got over 25 years of experience in the space. John, you ready to take us to the top? I certainly am. So what is AV over IP? AV over IP is this transition that's occurring where you used to develop AV solutions in a siloed way. So if you had like a video application in a given room, you only saw it there, you couldn't transport it to elsewhere in the corporation. AV over IP lets you move it around. Give me an example of that for people listening right now that might have their own offices. Sure. So for example, if you have a uh, desire to have uh, a video wall that's showing entertainment content, you know, or a better example, in your lobby of your building of your corporation, you walk in the lobby, you've got all kinds of entertainment playing, welcoming your guests to the corporation. That content probably comes from a server that's in an IT closet. Historically, you'd have had to put the server right next to that video wall. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. So now you can have one central location in your office and put it out to seven different screens on eight different floors and six different venues across your, your building. Absolutely right. We used to have an AV department. Everything's moving to IT. So it's that evolution and that ability to distribute. Very interesting. Okay. And so what are companies paying you on average per month to use this technology? Um, it varies by application. Right now, our platform supports uh, three different applications, one for control room usage, one for digital signage, and one for meeting rooms, uh, screencasting, uh, different price points for each. Uh, but overall, you know, we typically see around $30,000 of ARR per customer. Yeah, that's interesting. Okay, so and and if someone paying thirty thousand bucks per year, how many streams are they managing? Like, what's that package probably? Again, it varies because like you know you can do many more screens for digital signage that's not real time. If you're doing a control room that's mission critical operations and you're trying to stream high definition, high resolution to that uh, that vit la very large video wall, like you might imagine for like NASA's command and control center, um, that's a lot more. Uh, that's a a lot fewer screens because it's higher resolution. I see. Okay, interesting. So it's a combination of number and screens, resolution, and product-based upselling. Absolutely. And number of source devices that you're 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 muxing together. Number of source. Okay, that's what I'm interested in. Are there any other like utility-based upsells? So number of source devices, um, resolution. Uh, so there's a number of other things that you that you can upsell for, but the, the model that we typically go for is someone will come to us looking for one application or one solution need. And then we'll sell them the platform with the promise of them being able to expand to those many others, those five, six other use cases. Uh, and so that's usually our expansion model. Okay, based off use case, got it. Very cool. Okay, put this on a timeline for me. When did you guys launch? Uh, so we launched this whole offering in uh, April of 2020. Great timing, eh? Wait, but when did you launch? Because I have in my notes that you guys were launched in 2003. So the company was founded in 2003 and sought product market fit for technology it had created for a very, very long time. I joined the company in 2018 and said, we need to create an enterprise AV over IP platform, redirecting from lost you know, product market fit to actually finding product market fit. And so we developed a brand new product from 2018 to 2020, relaunched in 2020 on a SaaS model instead of a perpetual license model, and the company took off. Interesting. Okay. So how many customers are you now serving today? Uh, 500 enterprise customers. And we're, we're at around 5 million ARR, around 6 million uh, contracted ARR. Oh, what's going on there, YouTube? Good to see you guys. Now imagine this. You love watching these interviews with SaaS founders, but imagine if we took all of the valuation data out from over 2,807 interviews I've done manually. Saves you a lot of time. Well, we've done this. We've built it into the beautiful interface inside of FounderPath. Check this out. I'll show you how you can access this in a second, but you log in, you connect your Stripe account, you see your valuation real time, you can see what it changed over the past 88 days, and even set goals for valuation this year. Now, the secret valuation is there's many different ways to value a SaaS business. So the reason you're going to see three or four different valuations inside of your FounderPath dashboard, this is all free, by the way, is because depending on who's doing the buying of your SaaS company, you're going to get a different valuation. A VC is going to pay a different valuation. Private equity firm is different. If you're going to do a minority sale, that's different. And if you sell the whole business, that's a different valuation. You can see all those when I hover over here. 
right? So the teal is what a VC would pay. Yellow is what private equity and red is if you sold the whole thing outright. Now, what's cool about this is this is not built off random data. Again, you guys hear these interviews on YouTube. All these data are built from real time valuation data points founder share with us on the show. So traction 1.2 million seed round 3.7 raise. They sold 22% of their business. Go in here and filter by the event. Maybe you only want to see companies that have sold the whole business. Well, here are a bunch that have been acquired, the valuation and the multiple. Maybe you're going out right now and you're raising your seed round. Well, go in here and look at all this recent seed deals that went down, what they raised, what valuation they raised at, and what percent that they sold. There's never been a larger data set of SaaS valuations than what you can get now inside of FounderPath, and we're thrilled to bring it to you. All right, we're gonna go back to the YouTube video here in a second, but if you wanna check this tool out, if you wanna jump in and sign up, you can check it out for free to get your valuation at this link, this link, founderpath.com forward slash products forward slash valuations, or if you go to founderpath.com and hover over products, click on get your valuation here, and go ahead and sign up to give it a whirl. Again, all that valuation data live right inside the platform. I hope to see you there. All right, let's jump back into the interview. That's amazing. Okay, so 5 million bucks of ARR today. Uh, where were you exactly a year ago? Do you remember? In terms of ARR, I actually don't remember. Or MRR. Do you remember MRR, middle of last year? No, no, we focus on ARR. and uh, our. It, it would have been some, about a year ago, it probably would have been around 3 million. Okay, yeah. so you're almost doubling year over year. And have you guys decided to bootstrap the business or raise capital? Uh, we've raised capital, uh, but we've raised a modest amount. Uh, we've, we've raised 10 million uh, Series B financing. Prior to that, we raised about 3 million in, uh, in seed money. Okay, and that Series B was this year? That was. Okay, 10 million. And then three, the 3 million was pre or post you joining in 2018? Uh, that was post. Uh, okay, the, guys. Company, the company had no ARR before I joined. So no funding either? Correct. No funding either. How did they last 15 years with like no product, no revenue? I mean, how did the founders pay for food? Um, I like to differentiate between selling a license, a product slash solution and a platform, right? So they were selling licenses. They had a good technology that could throw stuff up on a screen, but they didn't have an application specified. So they weren't good at knowing the needs of a control room operator or what the needs of a a retail chain that wanted to have digital signage for menu boards or for whatever it may be. Um, and so they didn't optimize. So they were just selling licenses and doing it on a perpetual model. And they had bootstrapped their way for 20 years. Wow. Very interesting. Um, okay. That makes a lot of sense. So what, I mean, there might be companies right now that are stuck like this company was in 2018 and they went out and found you, but why is a guy like you going to join a company that's been stuck for 20 years? Well, I came into the company with this AV, AV over IP vision. I mean, I, I've been working in AV uh, networks. Yeah, but why not launch it from scratch yourself and own 100%? Because the, the amount of technical technological depth that's required to have a complete platform play is challenging. Um, there's a lot of protocol work. There's a lot of a lot of technology that needs to be integrated. And this company had already brought all that technology together. You know, and and I was able to leverage like the ten plus years of relevant technology into a product market fit in just a span of two years. I see. Okay. But when you're joining, obviously you need upside in this, right? If you're going to be CEO, how much equity did you ask for? Uh, I asked for uh, a certain percentage, which is, which has been, as I've proved out the model, as I've converted it to a SaaS model and gotten the product launch and gotten 500 plus customers, my, my equity position has increased. So you said something like, I'm making these numbers up. Hey guys, I really want to get, get you know, see a path to me owning 10% of the business. I'm happy to split that up in terms of option grants as we hit revenue targets. And what you're saying is you've sort of earned those option grants as you've grown over time. Is that the right sort of way to think about it? That's absolutely right. But then also with, with the round of financing, the new investor comes in and says, hey, you can do even more. You know, there's opportunity ah. for us to give you some additional upside. I see. So there's an ESOP pool that's being set up and then automatically granting you another chunk of that out of the ESOP pool just to keep you incentivized long term. Exactly right. I see. Very interesting. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. Um, what's the to total team size today? Uh, we're approaching approaching 100 people mm -hmm. um, and we are in a sales led model. So we're have heavy on sales and sales engineering um, as we go out into the field. Uh, we've got a pretty decent global footprint. Uh, we've got a Europe, Asia and uh, North America teams. Uh, so we're expecting that 
we'll be able to maintain that growth rate of over 85% for the next three years consistently. So mm-hmm. uh, we're pretty enthusiastic about that. Isn't that too slow though? I mean, you've raised, you've chosen to raise money, which means you have to grow faster. 85% is not interesting to these VCs. You've got to be at like 150, 200% at your stage year over year. Yeah, but I don't think VC is the only financing model that you have to. Yeah, but you already raised it. You already raised it. I agree with you, but you already raised it. Yeah, but if you as you look forward to the where the next financing is going to come from, you can look towards growth equity and private equity, and they have a different model than venture does. And as long as you enter the equation with a vision for the having the flexibility and conveying that flexibility to venture and your growth equity, private equity interested partners, then then your model can hold. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Most folks today during Series B are selling between ten and fifteen percent of the business. Were you guys sort of in that same range on your Series B? Uh, we were in that range, yes. Okay, fair enough. Got it. So, um, so got it. Ten to fifteen percent. Uh, you raised ten million. So you're talking like eighty to hundred million valuation, something like that in that range. Yeah, I would like to have that. That's very good. Yeah, yeah, very cool. Well, you well, that's what you did, right? If you sold ten to fifteen percent, you you had an eighty million valuation or higher. Yeah, yeah. In terms of you're discussing pre money and post, but I, I don't hang. Oh, my oh, hat. oh, I don't hang my hat on valuation to liquidity. Yeah. Well, I mean, valuation, I mean, if you sell hundred percent of your business before you exit, you own nothing. So you got to manage dilution as you're growing. <laughs> Absolutely. No, no, I completely agree. But I think that your, your true valuation comes down the road. Uh, well, we hope we, we, we hope, I mean, look, there's a lot of companies right now that sold a big valuation three months ago and they're going to have troubles growing into it and, and they're going to be and, and, and that's, and that's exactly my point, right? If you took a valuation four months ago, that's certainly changed five months later. So, so your true valuation, I mean, I think you, your valuation is driven off your ARR and your core metrics and, mm-hmm. and you've got to stick to those markets going to fluctuate with, with multiples and the like. So I, I just, I just think being as, as an entrepreneur, stick to your guns, know what your corporate value is and don't necessarily have a short term, short term valuation mindset in sight. That's my two cents. Mm-hmm. No, that makes good sense. You mentioned your sales have a, how many folks carry a quota at the company, a sales quota? Uh, we have, 18 of them who have a, have a quota. Interesting. And when they are fully ramped, what do you expect them to be hitting in terms of quota target? Uh, well, we use the, we use the SaaS industry metrics of, you know, three to five X, your, your, your comp should be guiding your, your quota. Uh, but, you know, we're looking at the, you know, one to $1.5 million of, of bookings. Yeah. Yeah. Which means they can earn 200 to 300 K a full on target earnings if they hit it. Yeah, that, that's, that's the right number for enterprise. Yeah. And now you mentioned you have a, it sounds like a powerful upsell model. You net dollar retention today, I imagine is way above, it should be way above hundred percent, right? Uh, the answer is it's a hundred over a hundred percent, but we've only just launched those six expansion products. Uh, the three expansion products, we're launching three more uh, in the fall. Um, okay. So, so, so our, our lead indicator right now is logo capture, right? Yep. And, and capturing as many of those as we can, that will give us the opportunity to expand in, in 2023. John, makes sense. Let's wrap up here with the famous five. Number one, favorite book? Uh, the Brothers Karamazov. The Brothers what? The Brothers Karamazov by Dostoevsky. What's a Karamazka? A I was a Russian literature minor. It's a, it's a famous book like War and Peace. Interesting. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying? Yeah, I'm a big fan of Chris Regal, who, who founded and launched a company called Stratacash, now a multi-billion dollar company out of Dayton, Ohio. Number three, what's your favorite online tool for building a userful? Grit. Uh, I think in this day and age, I think any CEO who's navigating a pandemic, great resignation, remote work, recession, and the like, I think grit trumps all. Great. So just to be clear, that's not an online tool. That's just a characteristic you think folks need to have. When I'm online, I'm showing grit. Grit. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> all right. Number four, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? About five. Okay. Uh, not, not a ton. You can survive on five? Uh, absolutely. I'm getting old. Okay. And so what's your situation? Married, single, kids? Single with two Eagle Scouts. Oh, very cool. Okay. And uh, how old are you? I'm 51. Last question. Something you wish you knew when you were 20. Uh, I wish I, I knew to drink more champagne, as W.C. Fields used to say. You know, <laughs> celebrate the small moments in life and, and don't get overwhelmed by the, by the big stuff. You'll survive. Guys, userful.com. If you have a big conference room with, or a big office with a bunch of different conference rooms, you can install it once and say floor number three, stream to all your conference rooms on floors, one, two, three, four, five, video walls, you name it, all from one central location. He had this vision, joined up with Userful in 2018, raised 13 million bucks to build this product, officially launched in 2020, scaled from 3 million in ARR to 5 million in ARR over the past 12 months as they look to keep scaling with their team. Uh, they've got over 500 enterprise customers, 90, I'd call it 90, 100 folks on the team as they're looking to scale here over the next 12 months. John, appreciate you taking us to the top. Thank you so much.
One more thing before you go. We have a brand new show every Thursday at 1 p.m. Central. It's called Shark Tank for SaaS. We call it Deal or Bust. One founder comes on, three hungry buyers, they try and do a deal live and the founder shares back-end dashboards, their expenses, their revenue, ARPU, CAC, LTV, you name it, they share it. And the buyers try and make a deal live. It is fun to watch every Thursday, 1 p.m. Central. Additionally, remember, these recorded founder interviews go live. We release them here on YouTube every day at 2 p.m. Central. To make sure you don't miss any of that, make sure you click the subscribe button below here on YouTube, the big red button, and then click the little bell notification to make sure you get notifications when we do go live. I wouldn't want you to miss breaking news in the SaaS world, whether it's an acquisition, a big fundraise, a big sale, a big profitability statement, or something else. I don't want you to miss it. Additionally, if you want to take this conversation deeper and further, we have by far the largest private Slack community for B2B SaaS founders. You want to get in there. We've probably talked about your tool if you're running a company or your firm if you're investing. You can go in there and quickly search and see what people are saying. Sign up for that at nathanlacka.com forward slash slack. In the meantime, I'm hanging out with you here on YouTube. I'll be in the comments for the next 30 minutes. Feel free to let me know what you thought about this episode. And if you enjoyed it, click the thumbs up. We get a lot of haters that are mad at how aggressive I am on these shows, but I do it so that we can all learn. We have to counter those people. We got to push them away. Click the thumbs up below to counter them and know that I appreciate your guys' support. All right. I'll be in the comments. See ya.